Hello, today I'll be presenting a project I made in OpenGL for my advanced computer graphics class. Um, this project is called Space Demo, and uh, let's just load it up. Um, okay, so first off, I'm just going to run the program, and then I'll go over how the code works after I've demonstrated it. So let's just get that started. It takes a while to load because I'm using 8K textures for some of my texture files, so. But as you can see, um, as the name suggests, this is a space demo. We are in space. Um, first thing you'll notice is the camera movement. Um, the camera movement is mapped to my mouse, so depending on how I move the mouse, changes the pitch and the yaw value, or just the pitch and the yaw of our little spaceship. So if I move down, my spaceship looks up, vice versa for down, and then I can also move left and right. Um, I can also strafe, so I can strafe left, strafe right, strafe up, strafe down, and then any mixture of the two. Um, also, we have basic movement, so we can move forward by holding shift, and we'll move in whatever direction that the spaceship's facing. So if I'm facing down, press shift, I'll move down. So no matter what direction I'm facing, I can just hold shift and go in that direction. This really helps make you feel like you're flying the aircraft. Um, I need hold control to go backwards. Kind of simple. And also, uh, let's find a point of reference. So we have a sun here. As you can see, we're in space. Um, it's kind of like a small representation of the solar system, although it's definitely not to scale. My strafing values are based off how I'm looking, too. So if I'm looking this way and I press up and down, I kind of go at this angle. But if I'm looking down and I press up and down, I go forward and backwards. Or if I'm looking straight, I go up and down. It's kind of hard to tell with this whole space background, like point of reference and stuff. but. Trust me, it works. Uh, first thing I guess I'll show off is the lighting. So our sun here uh, emits light, as our sun does in real life. And it's kind of hard to see with our player model. But you can see, especially if I uh, turn around, how the lighting bounces off the different angles of the back of my spaceship. And then you can see it like here, how that side is more lit. And something I have implemented is the closer you get to the sun, the more lighting you absorb. So if we get real close, it looks like we're basically way too hot because we're way too close to the sun. So let's get out of there. And you'll notice how the light kind of gets uh, less obtrusive, I guess, as we move away. I do have a zoom function. So we can zoom in on our spaceship. Um, you can just look at the little textures I have on the spaceship. It's a very basic metal texture. I've also colored the spaceship a bit. The back points are red and then the front is blue and then the middle is white. You can kind of see it. Just a easy color I put on top of uh, the texture. So you'll notice right away that we have the Earth and we have a moon. Um, the Earth revolves, or it doesn't revolve, it rotates around its axis and the moon kind of follows it and something you'll notice about the moon which is how the moon works in real life, is one side of the moon always faces the Earth, and the other side always faces away from the Earth, a.k.a. the dark side of the moon. Um, oh yeah, one more thing before we move on, talking about the planet, is I have a little spaceship here, uh, just to kind of show you what the model looks like. But I mean, you've kind of already seen that, but what I really wanted to show is, I know that when I'm moving the camera around, it can kind of make it look like the spaceship itself is moving, but it's not. Uh, the camera is rotating around the spaceship based off of a radius I set. It follows the pitch and the yaw values of the spaceship, and I do some little trig to keep it at a, the same radius and facing the same way that the spaceship does. Because as we can tell here, obviously the spaceship's not moving, it's just rotating. But like we let's look up into nowhere, it kind of looks like the spaceship itself is moving now. That's just an illusion. The camera's moving, not the spaceship. Uh, okay, so let's just start talking about the Earth. For the Earth, 
Um, it's using an 8K texture I found online. It looks really good, actually. It's just, you know, a simple... Um, what is it called? Rotate, I guess? Spin? It's not revolving. I guess it's just rotating. But something that I've implemented that's really fancy, actually, is the Earth is actually made up of two textures, and depending on whether it's night or day, we'll swap between them, and you'll notice... See how these lights start turning on? As you get closer to nighttime, all these lights start turning on. And I'm using a really neat little mathematical trick to get that effect. So now, nighttime Earth has all these lights on. And then when it gets back to daytime, you'll notice, oh, look, all the lights are turning off. It's really cool. And then we have daytime Earth. It's a very nice effect. Um, I'll go into more detail how I got that working. But it basically uses it uses um, the angle at which the light from the sun is hitting the planet to decide how much of the lights to turn on. It's not like baked in or anything. It's doing it real time. So if I were to move the Earth somewhere else or move the sun somewhere else, it would turn the lights on accordingly to whether or not it was dark on that side of the planet. Uh, simple moon. It looks good. I don't think I'm using a high-res texture for it, but I don't think I really need to. It looks convincing enough, and you'll notice the shadows follow the moon. I don't have any active shadows, so it's not like this Earth or the moon cast shadows. Or else, I mean, that would have been really cool. But see, you'll notice here, like, the moon is behind the sun, but there's no shadow being casted on it. It's still receiving light. I didn't do any uh, shadow casting or shadow mapping or anything like that. Uh, I haven't really learned that yet. Um, something else you'll probably have noticed by now is we've got this little guy out here. I decided to make this guy in like three seconds. It's really easy. It's basically a little Death Star. It kind of looks like a Death Star too. It's using this exact same texture as my spaceship, but it's mapped to a globe. So it looks like a Death Star that's ready to just like, you know, blow up the Earth. Not moving or anything. Just kind of floating out here. Um, I think that's about it as far as the visual presentation goes. I'm really happy with how the camera movement turned out. It's very fluid. Like It feels like I'm playing an actual game. It's very easy to control. You'll notice I'm not having any trouble going where I want to. And that's really important to me in games. I think one of the biggest importances, I guess, in games is how they control, how they feel, how they play. So getting the camera movement and the player movement down was the highest priority took me about a day to actually get that working and then everything else came afterwards but yeah and then the other thing I'm really happy with how these lights dynamically turn on based off how dark it is outside it looks really good and it's such a simple yet easy trick to implement you just need two textures that's it some two textures and some math um, that's about it oh also the sun spins it's kind of kind of noticeable. So now I'm going to talk about some of how this code works. Let's end it. So here's my program. It consists of our main file, and then we've got a vertex shader for the ship, a fragment shader for the ship. Then we've got a vertex and a fragment shader for any of our celestial objects. So the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and... Oh no, this is just for the Earth and the Moon, actually. The sun and space both use a very simple texture that have nothing. Simple fragment, uh, not texture, simple fragment uh, shader. That's not really doing anything to them because I don't want light or anything to affect those two things. But yeah, um, I'm just going to go over some quick things. I'll leave any of the code in the description. I don't want to go over how each one of these lines work. Basically, I load my textures in here. The textures are kind of variables I typed in. I'd rather not do that, but I was really struggling to do it otherwise. Here's uh, one of the most difficult parts was I had to map the data for my uh, spaceship manually. Um, I didn't load it in using any 
like model loading or anything like that. So here we have the vertex, the position data, the colors of the ship, the texture coordinates, and the normals of each face. Normals wasn't that bad. I just did a cross product of, you know, two points or two vectors to find the normals for each map or each face. And then I put it in an array here to be called in a vertex array. We have position, color, texture coordinate, and then normal vector. That's for each point. Have them labeled. Uh, here we have a simple program I found online. Although my professor has discussed this before, basically creating a sphere and how to map texture, uh, vertex, and normal coordinates to that sphere. The math is kind of complicated. You need to know some trigonometry or geometry, whatever you want to call it, to do it. But um, honestly, there's a lot of functions out there like this, or even utility libraries that can just create a sphere for you. Here we just have some cube data. I never even use a cube. I don't know why I even put it in here. Here's um, assigning the vertex ray for my ship, vertex ray for any spheres. So this includes the sun, the moon, uh, the stars, and the earth. This is my render loop. So from line 430 to line 630. So it's 200 lines. Uh, it's pretty simple too. It breaks it down. So we just have our variable declarations. I don't think I need these in the render loop. I could probably make it a bit more efficient by declaring them outside. This is just for like our ship lighting properties, our ship material properties. Here we have our sphere material properties, our lighting properties. Here's me drawing the ship right here. And this is where a lot of the math comes from. This is how the camera follows the ship. It does some mathematical stuff. This took a while. I had to do a lot of scratch paper to find out how exactly the camera's position related to the ship's position. See if we have some sine and cosine functions. We're doing them on the pitch. This is the radius. So the camera always stays at a certain radius behind the ship. This is our... Uh, camera I guess you want to call it coordinate space our coordinate space for our camera which also matches the same coordinate space as the ship having this is really helpful for doing things like strafing um, just letting setting some uniforms here the sphere shader is pretty simple just loading the sphere rotating it uh, scaling it well this is the earth so in particular and then we have the moon's own properties. And then we have the Death Star, which is really doing nothing but just sitting there. And then we have the sun. Again, just kind of sitting there, but it is rotating right here. Uh, right here, actually. And then we have space, which, again, is not really doing much. This is uh, how we strafe, basically. We have our WASD uh, movement. For strafing up, down, left, right. And then we also have right here shift to go forward and then control to go backwards. Ignore this turn, I'm not even using it. And this is a, a f function I took from online. This is super helpful because I would have never been able to figure out how to calculate the pitch or the yaw for the spaceship. This calculates the pitch in the yaw based off how you move the mouse. And it returns the values right here. This is the pitch in the yaw. So using those values, I can rotate the spaceship. And then also using those values, I can determine where the camera should be behind the spaceship. Very helpful. Originally, this was pulled from learnopengl.com. Website super helpful if you're looking to learn OpenGL. But um, he had it mapped to a camera. So instead, I mapped it to a, like a player ship and then had the camera follow that ship. So I had to kind of do some reverse engineering on how the camera worked because it's no longer being controlled by the player movement, but it's following something that's being controlled by the player movement. Uh, this is just our zoom function. You know, basically, oh yeah, I'm using a GLFW for the window initialization and GLAD. 
Everything else here is pretty standard. We have our standard libraries. Um, this is for loading images. This is for camera movement, but I actually never use this class because I created my own camera movement. This is for shaders. Again, this is from learnopengl.com. This is a super helpful class. Makes really making shaders really easy and you don't have to think about it. Love it. This is just some matrices libraries. Most people familiar with OpenGL know what GLM is, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, here's our vertex shader for our player ship. And we have, you know, basically our input values, our position, our color, our text coordinate, or normal. They just, down here, they just get turned into the view space and passed to the fragment shader. Fragment shader really just, what it does, it takes the uniforms declared for the material, you know, forms to clear from the light, and it does the lighting. So we have our ambient lighting, our diffuse lighting, our specular lighting. This lighting right here, basically, I have this extra function here that says, depending on how close you are to a light source, depends on how intense the light source is. This isn't really true for space, because there's nothing obstructing the light, but I kind of like the effect it gives anyways. It kind of gives the effect of like a flashlight, like a flashlight, you know, eventually dies out. So that's why I have this here. Otherwise, the flashlight would be the same strength across an infinite distance, which doesn't really look realistic. It doesn't really, you know, show how actual flashlights work. I'm only using this property, though, for the ship, just to show the players, or show you how when the ship gets closer to the sun, it gets brighter. Basic, uh, same thing for the sphere vertex shader. Just take in all the properties, put it into view space. But for the... For the sphere fragment shader, here's where I do that cool daytime to nighttime switch is we have a night texture and we have a day texture for the Earth, and it's being mixed. So these two textures are being overlapped on top of each other, and the amount they're being overlapped depends on how much diffuse lighting they're getting, which basically means if something's getting a lot of diffuse lighting, it basically means it's really bright. So you'd want to do more of the daytime texture, but if it's getting very little diffuse lighting, it's going to be very dark so then you use the night texture that's how we get that cool uh, you can see the lights turning on as the earth goes to nighttime very simple but very convincing uh, you know algorithm I guess or function Sun like I said is very basic and that's about it I'll uh, run it one more time just to kind of give you another overlook of it I actually programmed this in two days, but I mean, saying two days is kind of unfair because I did a lot of studying beforehand, a lot of practice beforehand, all off that learnopengl.com website. Again, super helpful. Taught me way better than my professor ever could. Um, but like actually sitting down and doing this uh, was two days. The first day was literally just creating the player model and trying to get movement to work, which I couldn't even get. But the second day, I made a lot of progress and created basically everything else. Again, the hardest parts were getting the player movement, camera movement, and um, loading in the spheres, actually, because at first, I was just not sure how to do it. So I was happy I came across some functions online for creating spheres. I could have used, um, uh, I could have used like some utility libraries like Glut for creating a sphere, but I kind of wanted to do it by hand. As that's kind of the whole theme of this entire project was just doing everything by hand. All the lighting's done by hand, camera position done by hand, um, player movements, it's just all done by hand, just to get a really good understanding of how matrix multiplication works, uh, you know, trigonometry, just understanding properties. Like I learned so much about lighting properties, and colors. But yeah, it's a really nice project. I'm happy to have done it. And honestly, I'm thinking of improving on it in the future or just making something new. Um, thanks for watching.